Welcome to 2023, the year in which the weather is no longer small talk. Three months in and the climate has already shocked us, specifically in the north and northwestern parts of the country. 30 degree weather in the Himalayas, thunderstorms in March, what is happening? Well, a series of powerful meteorological phenomena combined with eco-unfriendly activities in the name of development has made the country's climate go haywire. What is the impact of this change and what can we expect going forward? I'm Rukmini and I'm here to spell it out for you. The onset of February itself, we started seeing a summer-like environment around the region. So we had never seen in the place uh, where we are located a temperature of 38 degrees. And that is, uh, I would say, roughly around uh, 2,500, 2,600 meters altitude. We were also thinking that if the uh, time continues like this, we might also need uh, you know, uh, ceiling fans or ACs in the region where we are currently. You just heard from Abhishek Likam, who works for the Central Himalayan Rural Action Group or CHIRAG based out of Nainital, Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand mostly records temperate climatic conditions. However, in this graph, you can see that the state recorded higher than average temperatures on 27 out of 28 days in February. In fact, February this year was the hottest since 1901. So, how does a state whose average temperature is 20 degrees Celsius suddenly record a temperature of around 30 degrees? Heat wave, heat wave, heat wave, heat wave. severe heat wave. The India Meteorological Department announces a heat wave when the temperature in the plains hits 40 degrees Celsius and the temperature in the hilly areas reaches 30 degrees Celsius. It is also considered a heat wave when there is a sudden increase in the temperature by 6 degrees or more. A heat wave occurrence also is a part of a natural variable. But what we are worried is that frequency is increasing and the duration is increasing. So these that increase a uh, long-term trend, positive trends, are caused by global warming. Now, uh, global warming is undoubtedly caused by increase in uh, fossil fuel uh, emissions. In the north and the northwest, in mountainous states like Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, February sees some amount of rainfall because of a phenomenon called the western disturbances. In simple terms, western disturbances are storms that originate in the Mediterranean Sea. From there, they blow across Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and then to the north and northwestern parts of India. There, they are blocked by the Himalayas. The moisture that these storms bring with them results in rain in February in these regions. This year, however, the western disturbances simply weren't as strong as they usually are. Plus, as a result of global warming, they didn't bring the rainfall that they usually do. And that is why the mountainous areas were surprisingly hot. Earlier, the temperatures used to never be above 27, 28 degrees Celsius. Now we know that, you know, that is kind of a usual temperature for us. Here, what we are experiencing more is like there's a shift of uh, seasons, which is very unpredictable. Uh, untimely rains and then untimely snow, then untimely heat. And then when it is hot, it is very hot. And why does this happen? So everywhere the temperature is increasing, over there also it is increasing. Therefore, the snow melt that takes place earlier than it used to. May-like conditions are happening in, 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 in a, even in March and February. And the warm season has expanded closer and closer to the winter season. And that is affecting the snow melt and other processes. Uttarakhand has seen extensive activity in road and railway construction and the construction of hydroelectric projects in the past few years. Besides, there is no restriction on the ownership of land. These activities have caused a clear change in the state's climatic conditions. But up in Himachal Pradesh, the story is a bit different. The Himachal Pradesh government makes it difficult for a non-Himachali to buy property in the state. So you'd think that the situation would be better, but you'd be wrong. Because you can always lease a land. Himachal has always been a tourism-oriented state and everybody is here is basically kind of linked to tourism either through the adventure sports activities, or let's say homestays. Ultimately, there are so many people who are basically inflowing from outside. It has been a very, very haphazard and a rapid kind of a growth, you know, like uh, it, it was not really planned well. And, uh, and so people basically opted for the cheapest construction which was available and that was concrete and cement. And that's why there's so many, like uh, if you see uh, the case of Manali, uh, Shimla, um, Parvati Valley, Kasol. Rahul Bhushan grew up in Himachal Pradesh and continues to work with the craftspeople in the region. On the other hand, Subhash Mandhapurkar, who moved to the state in 1977 from Maharashtra, has witnessed a definite change in the hills. Throughout from there, Kasoli to my place, 
continuously big cement concrete construction sir coming up and this because of this constructions the aqua fur or the ground water channels are become, getting very disturbed previously there is to be yeah, rim, what kind of a range kind of a rim jim rains rain you know you keep on dropping to a 48 hours 72 hours and then there would be big sun coming out we used to have 100 cloudy days and something like 70 uh, rainy days a year nowadays the clouds come they pour the uh, monsoon like a uh, something like a, a a tank losing its bottom suddenly and pouring it and then vanish for the days all along such erratic weather isn't just a passing phenomenon it has a direct impact on the livelihoods of people uh, if you see the temperature also has a lot of uh, a um, lot of uh, big role to play in terms of uh, the fruiting season and uh, since uh, you know the fruits like uh, raspberries or uh, rhododendron so which uh, typically start blooming uh, around uh, feb end or say march so we started seeing those kind of flowers or fruits blooming or say right after makar sankranti we started seeing all these flowers and all blooming so this is not a right sign uh, the whole agricultural system is basically on a shift. Of course, monsoons are shifting. So, you know, there is this time of spring when all the buds are coming. And um, at that time, if it is a heavy snowfall uh, or rainfall, um, then uh, then the buds are basically destroyed. Apple, peaches, cherries. In Himachal Pradesh, in Kasoli, Tarsil, it is mainly uh, depending upon the vegetable cultivation. The monsoon rain water can be stored and used for the tomato cultivation. But if there is no winter rain, the peach and capsicum is gone. This is the time when the capsicum and uh, peas would be filled with the truckloads and sent to the Ludhiana, Amritsar, Chandigarh, Delhi. This year, not a single tempo even. So it is, it is now affecting a lot. So, is the community prepared to deal with the impact of such change? We have to realize that as a middle class, like I'm talking about me, you're talking about maybe you, right? We are going to be probably all right when that climate change comes. But the people on the ground, people you know from the lower socioeconomic strata, they are going to be the most impacted one, right? So what responsibility we have to make sure that these people actually remain all right, you know, when, when, when the changing time comes. Uh, and this is a global problem and unless globally we are able to impact the change in the climate uh, in a significant way, uh, this in the next uh, 50, 60, 100 years, I don't think it is going to, because already we have put so much of, uh, um, so much of uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and therefore the adaptation becomes that more important. Uh, other than mitigation. The mitigation is not going to happen that fast. Over the past few weeks, Uttarakhand has had rainfall and thunderstorms, which is rather unusual for the month of March. One of the main reasons for these erratic changes in climatic patterns this year is the transition from a three-year La Nina phase to the El Nino phase. La Nina and El Nino are climatic patterns that are caused by winds in the Pacific Ocean. This year, India is likely to see a hike in temperatures and possibly droughts too, given the transition into the El Nino phase. The last time we had such a transition was in 2016, the hottest year on record. So, based on the track record, we can expect a hot year going forward, not just in the mountains, but the rest of the country as well.